Quincy Jones discovered me. And it's so interesting to me because when I was uh, working as a television newswoman in Baltimore, and really all I wanted to do was be an actress, but I was doing television. And I felt at the time, I can't quit this job because this is what everybody else wants to do. And if I quit this job, what am I going to do? And I was going to a speech coach at the time that the station had sent me to. They, you know, they, the broadcasting school, they sent everybody to the same woman. And I was telling her, you know, I really don't want to do this. What I really want to do is act. And she says, my dear, you don't want to act. Because if you wanted to act, you'd be doing it. What you want to be, my dear, is a star. Because um, if you wanted to act, you'd be waiting tables in New York. You'd be, and I thought, now why am I going to wait tables if I'm already working in TV? So I said, well, what I think is going to happen is I will be discovered because I want it so badly, somebody's going to have to discover me. And she said, you just dream. You dream, you're a dreamer. So when it happened, I called her up. I said, you will not believe this. I got discovered. And it really was a discovery. It's like one of those Lana Turner stories, only it wasn't a drugstore. He was uh, in his hotel room, saw me on TV. The interesting thing about that is that I, I truly believe that thoughts are the greatest vehicle to change power and success in the world. Everything begins with thoughts. The chairs that we're sitting in, the room that we're in, all started because somebody thought it. So I thought of the color purple for myself. I know this is gonna sound strange to you. I read the book. I, I got so many copies of that book. I passed the book around to everybody I knew. If I was on the bus, I'd pass it out to people. And when I heard that there was going to be a movie, I started, I started talking it up from myself. I didn't know Quincy Jones or Steven Spielberg or how on earth I would get in this movie. I'd never acted in my life. I felt it so intensely that I had to be a part of that movie. I just, I really do believe I created it for myself. I wanted it more than anything in the world and would have done anything to do it. Create the highest, grandest vision possible for your life because you become what you believe. When I was a little girl, Mississippi, growing up on the farm, only Buckwheat is a role model, watching my grandmother boil clothes in a big iron pot through the screen door because we didn't have a washing machine and made everything we had. I watched her and realized somehow inside myself and the spirit of myself that although this was segregated Mississippi and I was colored and female, that my life could be bigger, greater than what I saw. I remember being four or five years old, I certainly couldn't articulate it, but it was a feeling, and a feeling that I allowed myself to follow. I allowed myself to follow because if you were to ask me what is the secret to my success, it is because I understand that there is a power greater than myself that rules my life. And in life, in life, if you can be still long enough in, in all of your endeavors, the good times, the hard times, to connect yourself to the source, I call it God, you can call it whatever you want, to the force, nature, Allah, the power. If you can connect yourself to the source and allow the energy that is your personality, your life force to be connected to the greater force, anything is possible for you. I am proof of that. I think that my life, the fact that I was born where I was born and the time that I was and have been able to do what I've done speaks to the possibility, not that I am special, but that it could be done. So I have paid attention to my life because I understand that my life, just like your life, is always speaking to you where you are in the language with the people with the circumstances and experiences that you can understand and interpret if you are willing to see that always life god is speaking to you now it took me a while to actually really get this and to understand it but once i did i started paying attention to everything and one of the reasons why i can now accept the fact that I can offer my gatherings of information and wisdom and call myself a spiritual teacher is that every single person who ever came on my show and I hear there's like 37,000 guests I've talked to a lot of them came from dysfunction and a lot of them wouldn't appear to be teachers but every one of them had something to say that was meaningful and valuable and that I could use to grow myself into the best of myself which is what all of our jobs are your number one job is to become more of yourself and to grow yourself into the best of yourself real work is to figure out where your power base is and to work on the 
alignment of your personality, your gifts that you have to give with the real reason why you're here. That's, that's the number one thing you have to do is to work on yourself and to fill yourself up and keep your cup full. Keep yourself full. Now, I used to be afraid of that. I used to be afraid, particularly from people who say, oh, she's, she's so full of herself. She's so full of herself. And now I embrace it. I, I consider it a compliment that I am full of myself because you only when you're full I'm full I'm overflowing my cup runneth over I have so much I have so much to offer and so much to give and I am not afraid of honoring myself you know it's miraculous when you think about it well, the thing that works for me all these years whether it was the magazine or which I still have or whether it was the show I could I understood that there's a common denominator in the human experience and I want the same thing you want which is the same thing you want and you want. What we all want is to be able to live out the truest, highest expression of ourselves as a human being. That doesn't end until you take your last breath. What is the truest, highest vision that you hold for yourself? No matter where you are in your life, there's always the next level. There's always the next level to the last breath. So I feel that I always knew that I would get be done with the show when I felt like, oh, I've said as much as I could say here on this platform. And then how will I be used? If there were if there were a theme song to my life, Amazing Grace would be one of them, and Keep On Using Me To Use Me Up would be another one. You know that Bill Withers song? So I feel that until you have used your value as a human being, you're not done. And so the key, the secret, the magic is to surrender to God's dream for you. To quit fighting against and pushing against and disallowing against and resisting against against and trying to tell the creator, the universal forces, divine intelligence, what you are supposed to do and get still and know for sure what his dream, the dream is for you. And so anything you hear about me that feels good, sounds good, you think about, I wonder what Oprah's doing, how she's doing, I, I am living the dream. And I want you to live the dream because I'm not living the dream because I'm special. I'm living the dream because I was obedient to the call of the dream. So I want you to leave here today thinking about what is the dream for you? What is God's dream for you? What does the creator's dream hold for you? So often we spend our lives wishing and hoping and hoping and wishing and desiring things. This is what I know for sure. You don't get what you wish for. You don't even get what you hope for. You get what you believe. So what is it you believe and know to be God's dream for you? So I live in the dream. I'm living in the space of the dream.